Experiments. The fear of ghost hunting. Hmm. A Jedi craves not these things. But patience you must have, my young Padawan. Hmm. Yes. Truly wonderful, the mind of the 9 a.m. producer is. The Jedi and his princesses use the Force for perfection and entertainment. Never attack. Now, start the Halloween show you will. Luke, do it. Do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> yes! Happy Halloween! Hit it, boys! Yes! Good morning and happy Halloween! There has been a great disturbance uh. in the 9 a.m. show. I am young Luke Skywalker. And we, we are Princess, Princess Leia. Leia. I'm this Princess Leia. <laughs> and I'm Princess Leia of Endor. Because for Nick, one Princess Leia was simply not enough. We both said, we can be Yoda, we can be Chewie. Nope, nope. Oh, two, no, 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 two no. Two Princess Leias. Two Princess Leias. Why only have one when you can have two, <laughs> is what I say. You both look fabulous. Great to see you guys uh, as we await for the Millennium Falcon to return. The Force is calling. Chewie is here. Awesome. R2-D2, Boba Fett. <laughs> are all here from the 501st Legion of Kansas City. You guys look fantastic. We got more from these guys uh, coming up on the show today. We have so much more for you as well. Also on today's show, we cannot forget about our true Jedis, the Kansas City Royals. Our own John Holt has traveled to a galaxy far, far away. He is in New York this morning with some flavor ahead of tonight's <laughs> big game. And just in time for the spooky holiday, we channel the Force. We're learning how to levitate materials with our hands and creating flying arcs of electricity with Science City. All right, Michelle, I am so excited for our guest. He <laughs> has been the voice behind Jedi Master Yoda, blockbuster hits like Wolverine and X-Men. He's even been the announcer for four Academy Awards. Guess what? Tom Kane hails right here from the Metro. He is here to talk about his voiceover work, his extensive career, and we are going to have some fun with Tom. <laughs> he is a great impersonator, and he's going to channel some famous characters for us coming up. Looking forward to that. All right, now, Leia of uh, Endor. Which one? Uh, Leia of Endor. <laughs> yeah, As you know, one? the Millennium Falcon has traversed an asteroid, an asteroid field. We don't Are want to you do that. Heaven right now? Well, I'm a little hyperventilating. <laughs> Bucky on my side right now. Uh, do we have any uh, asteroids in our? Uh, intergalactic galaxy right now as you check the weather? Well, I can tell you this much. Right now, the skies are clear, so we can definitely see it coming. If it was coming. <laughs> but we're going to start to cloud things up. Temperatures out the door right now. A little on the chilly side. We still are hanging on to the 30s in many locations. 41 downtown, 40 for KCI, 39 in Olathe, 32 right now out the door up in Excelsior Springs. So it is a little on the chilly side. We do have that cloud cover just off to the west along with all of that rain, and that will be heading our way as we make our way into the late evening hours overnight. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about temperatures that are a little on the cool side today. Highs only in the upper 50s. Going to send it now into Kerry for a check on power traffic. 904 this morning and we are still watching some problems in the Lee Summit area right there at 470 and Raytown Road. An accident in the eastbound lanes pretty much shut down both directions for a period of time. You can still see some red popping up on our real time map. We take a live look outside. Here is this eastbound traffic. You can see a dump truck there overturned and it looks as though we have the dump truck as well as four different cars involved with this and we have one lane of traffic really slow to get by. So here's westbound traffic if you're coming in from Lee Summit towards the triangle against slow and 
both directions. You want to avoid 470 completely until this accident is completely cleared. Again, a dump truck and four different cars, only minor injuries involved with this. If you want to use a detour, you can head northbound and use Bannister Road, or you can drop south and use 107th Street. So again, 470 and Lee Summit's a complete mess. Travel times, though, in other parts, Metro are really looking pretty good. We've got a lot of green, especially the Bond Bridge out there coming in from the south side. No problems there. It's 470 we're keeping an eye on. Fox 4 Power Traffic working for you. All right, thank you. Uh, we have some other news going on, too. Of course, we're gearing up to watch the Royals on TV tonight. So, of course, a little throwback to 1985 when they last won the World Series. Fox Force John Holtz working for you live in New York before Game 3, talking with some people, including a couple with a house divided, fans of each team. Good morning. Hey, good morning. I, I, before we get to them, I, you talk about a disturbance in the force. You think it's that way in your galaxy? Check out mine, Times Square. This is the way it is all the time in this town. Oh my, but we're having a great time in New York City. And yes, we did catch up with Emily Passer from Leewood. Went to Blue Valley North High School, came to New York to go to college, fell in love with Peter. That's great, right? Well, we had to visit their Upper West Side apartment last night near Central Park to just double check to make sure everything's okay because Peter is a Mets fan. We got Royals married to Mets for about a year. They're happy newlyweds, but boy, oh boy, Suddenly, worlds collided in their galaxy, and now they find themselves facing off in the World Series. All right, that's fine. Normally they cheer for each other, but when it comes time to the series, Royals versus Mets, all's fair in love and World Series, but there are rules. We <laughs> have a few rules we're trying to follow. We're not watching the games together. That's that's rule number one. <laughs> that's, it, it, it wouldn't work. It would be a bad situation. No. <laughs> Emily is a fan. I am a diehard fan, and um, I, I need to be with other big, big meth fans. And he is. He's been going out. She went out one game. He went out the other. Right now, she has the advantage. Advantage Royals, two games to none. As we continue our presence on the road to gold here in Times Square, I'd love to pose with one of these, but I'm afraid uh, the corporate bosses don't want us tipping. Back off. That's it for here. We'll see you tonight. Fox 4 News at 5 and 6 live from City Field. It's Royals Mets game three on the road to gold. Thank you, John. It is game three tonight in New York at City Field. First pitch is at 7.07. And remember, you can only watch the game on Fox 4 right here, our channel. No need to tune anywhere else. Also, no need to sit in line on Black Friday. Some stores are launching their first big holiday sale this weekend, Halloween weekend. Walmart's going to be one of the first out of the gate. On Sunday, Walmart will offer discounts on thousands of items, including toys and electronics iPad minis will be about 60 bucks cheaper and a 48 inch smart TV will be about 20 bucks cheaper. The force is really strong with this family. Eight year old Jeremy Miller's dad turned his wheelchair into a Star Wars snow speeder from the Empire Strikes Back. Working flaps, the guns actually shoot glowing Nerf darts loaded with glow sticks. What a great dad. Is that cool or what? I don't know how long it took, but that's fantastic. Pop star Lady Gaga is partnering with Mattel, the toy company, to help kids embrace how they were born this way. Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation signed a three-year deal with Mattel's Monster High to work toward inspiring empowerment and acceptance among young people. The two organizations will create events and social media campaigns, all geared towards building confidence in young people across the country. Well, the Jedi known as Geek Dad is here. That's what he calls himself, and he has got the top Star Wars toys for you to check out ahead of the holiday season. So this is just kind of a base preview, so you can just kind of see what you're working with. And a local special effects studio takes us inside the making of creative 3D animation. We learn what it takes to put a feature film like Star Wars together and how it's changed over the last 45 years. You're watching Fox 4 News at 9.
sticking with us on this Halloween Eve. Of course, uh, the new Star Wars movie comes out just in time for the holidays. So Kansas City's very own geek dad, David Banks, is here with some of the hottest toys that channel the force. And these are sure to be hot sellers this holiday season. They are, Your Worship. Um, got <laughs> yeah, I like that. You're my new favorite guest. <laughs> what are we going to start with over here? We're going to start with the Lego Star Wars toys because Lego always does a great job with Star Wars. Um, they have the first order snow speeder, which is neat because it has some hidden wheels underneath when it's built and it appears to hover. Uh -huh. Next to it, we have the first order special forces TIE fighter. Wow. And it's a bit bigger set. It has some projectiles it shoots out that looks like red laser beams. Oh, cool. How long do you think it would take a kid to put one of these together? Uh, maybe a couple hours. It's about 570 pieces, I think. Okay. Very nice. What do we have down here? These some remote toys. control toys. These are from a company called Airhog. We have a Millennium Falcon drone that lights up in the front and the back when it's turned on, and its remote makes some realistic sounds. So you can pretend that Han and Chewie are hitting hyperspace in this hunk of junk. Awesome. Now that one's a little bit tougher to pilot, so it's for older kids, but for the younger kids, we've got a bit of a throwback. Luke Skywalker in the land speeder. You can Look. set that down on your kitchen floor, your hallway, and have it zip around. It makes How realistic sounds too. cool is this? Okay, and we cannot leave out Yoda. Yes. I love Yoda. So this is one of the big ticket items. This is amazing. This is a piece of animatronics that's interactive so kids can talk to Yoda and oh, Yoda will kidding. reply. Oh. He teaches kids how to use a lightsaber, impart some Jedi wisdom, and it's really incredible. I think a lot of kids are going to want legendary Yoda. Yoda Maybe a few adults, too. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Nick Vassos probably has this number one on his list. Michelle, we might have to pitch in together to afford it. And what do we have here? So this is the BB-8 app-enabled droid from Sphero. Okay. And you pair this with your smartphone, download an app, and you can use it like a remote control car and have it run around oh, your desk wow. or floor. It also has an autonomous mode where it will patrol a room. And the really neat thing is that with your smartphone's camera, you can record images that come back. He will play holographically, like R2-D2 in the first movie. How cool oh is that? God, that is awesome. All right, we're going to pick up some of these things because yes. we've got to show them off. What do we have okay, over here? Okay, so just in time for Halloween, and also because kids love to act out scenes, mm -hmm. Hasbro has some things like some masks. We have a first order Stormtrooper. Okay. And Kylo Ren. Okay. Um, Nerf has some blasters. This is a stormtrooper blaster that shoots foam darts up to 65 feet. Perfect. And then 65 feet. Dang, you could. This is really neat. This, they call this the blade builder. And with it, kids can assemble their own unique creative. Oh my gosh, it's like the lightsaber, lightsaber on steroids. Yes. <laughs> so with that, they can go on and uh, uh, you know battle evil or or fight for the dark side as they want to control the galaxy. There you go. Thank you so Absolutely. much for being here. Such a great guest. If you'd like to learn more about uh, Dave, check him out at geekdad.com for more information on this morning's gadgets. We're going to have those as well as Dave's social media pages on our website. Just go to fox4kc.com. And Luke, we're sending it over to you. There is a twin sister. Now your betrayal is complete. They wanted something that sounded like a cowboy. So I, I gave him Rex Allen, the old, you know, the guy, the old narrator from the Walt Disney Travelogue. <laughs> from Kansas City commercials to the Academy Awards shows and blockbuster hits, Tom Kane is one of the best voice actors in the business. Coming up after the break, he is here with more on why it's harder than you may think. Leia? Definitely looking forward to that, Luke. We are going to be talking about rain in the forecast for later today, and I'll let you know if that looks to interrupt those trick-or-treating plans for tomorrow night. It's all coming up next. You're watching Fox 4 News. At Three years ago, they disappeared from New York without a trace. What the heck is going on? Now, surprise, freaks! The Zoo Crew. Where are we? Is somewhere new. Africa? Although much of the blast was contained underground, the explosion spread a radioactive cloud for miles. Live from the Kodak Theater at Hollywood and Highland in Los Angeles, California, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences invites you to the 78th Annual Academy Awards. Oh man, what if we told you the voice behind everything you just heard came from the same guy? And guess what? He's right here from our area in Overland Park, Kansas. We are talking about the great Tom Kane who has joined us this morning. <laughs> Tom, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Oh man, we are honored to have him. He's, he's a voice actor. 
He's in studio with us this morning. Uh, you grew up in Prairie Village and you lived in LA for about 20 years. Briefly tell us how you got started in a voiceover career. It started at a young age, didn't it? Yeah, I was just a bored teenager and thought it'd be fun to you know, hear myself on, on television. I didn't know anybody got paid for it. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was one of those kids that uh, today they'd, they'd have me on medicine up to my eyeballs. I, <laughs> my first grade teacher actually tied me to my chair with jump ropes. But uh, The first time that you were in the studio and, and people were, they were a 15 year old kid. What, what is this 15 year old oh, kid doing yeah. in here? Yeah, I had to have my dad drive me to the studio <laughs> because I didn't have a driver's license yet. And of course they walk up to him. And they're starting to talk to him about this voiceover that they're doing. And after about 10 seconds, he's like, no, no, it's this, this kid over here. You know, I'm in my fringy cut off jeans and my tennis shoes were stained green from cutting the grass. And <laughs> Needless to say, you knocked their socks off with it, your audition there worked, in the park. Yeah. yeah, it worked out well. Uh, and so you just steadily build your career. As we mentioned, you lived in uh, Los Angeles for 20 years. What are you primarily doing these days right now? Uh, most of my work day to day is movie trailers. Um, you'll hear me on, uh, uh, you do mostly lighter things, car, you know, animated features. Mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, Tim Allen is the Shaggy Dog 2 from Walt Disney Pictures. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Or uh, the voice I do for the Pixar stuff is, um, you know, it's Disney Pixar's Up. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. Rated PG. You know, that kind of stuff. So. How do you find your voices? I, I don't know. I'm, you know, for a lot of voiceover guys, they really work hard at, at coming up with new voices and, and I'm, I'm lazy. I mean, either it's there and I can do it or it's not. And, uh, you know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't work to try to come up with a new voice, really. It's just, it's, I, you know, I just recycle the stuff I grew up on. I, you know, I was a kid who was watching reruns after school every day and I got my French accent from LeBeau on Hogan's Heroes and my Scottish accent from Scotty on Star Trek. Captain, you cannot come past for nine or some blue. <laughs> And the really weird part is some of these guys, as they got older and then passed away, I've been hired to replace them. And I mean, like I do the voice of Scotty in, in, in games now, and I'm just going, this is really weird. But One animation that you're working on, you have for a while, is Yoda on Clone oh, yes. Wars, that uh, animation series. I've been doing Yoda for almost 20 years, uh, uh, pretty much everything. They, 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 uh, Frank has come out of retirement a couple times, but pretty much for everything that you've heard of Yoda for the last couple decades has been me, you know. A Jedi Master's voice, you have found, yes. How do you, he has a different <laughs> way of speaking and talking. I did it, was it a trick to kind of learn his, no, his they, way? No, well, not really. I was such a Star Wars nerd. I, I probably saw the movies a dozen times each and it just kind of was there, you know, in your head. Every kid was trying to talk like Yoda or C3, I mean, Hello, my name is C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations, and this is my counterpart, R2-D2, you know. That is amazing. I've, ended up, I've done some of that. I've done, um, recently I've been doing Admiral Akbar for a couple of projects, I've, you know. The forest moon of Endor will be in range, it's a trap! You know, that. <laughs> uh, like that. The, the Force Awakens is coming out, and everybody is so excited to see it. You've been the voice of Yoda. Uh, people watching it here were wondering, are, is there any connection between you and the, and the, and the Force Awakens? I, I really don't know. Uh, I okay. I, 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 if, I, if I knew and told you, then the Emperor would send some <laughs> Sith to kill you. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, as far, honestly, truth be told, I really, they have not sent me a script. Any work that I might do on it would probably be, you know, uh, just before the very end in post-production. And... Uh, and they don't tell you anything. So the, gotcha. the, uh, the one thing I have heard from some people who are working on the film, I mean, they won't divulge a single detail except they get this nice grin on their face and they go, it's really good. Ah, oh, so. I cannot wait. All right, Tom, stick around. We're going to have some fun with you. and some of You do some terrific impersonations. <laughs> hey, to learn more about Tom Kane and all of the work that he has done, go to TomKane.com. You also can find him on Facebook at Tom Kane, VO guy, and coming up after the break, we're gonna we're gonna take a crack at uh, some of Tom's best <laughs> impersonations of. Fire. All right, we are back with award-winning voiceover actor Tom Kane, and we're gonna channel some of your best characters. <laughs> All right, we've got some figures here, and we are going to begin with the legendary Sean Connery. Oh. Here. <laughs> I actually ran into him once at a bar, 
And someone told him I did his voice. And he said, all right, let's hear it. And I gave him a few lines of himself. And he says, uh, that's not bad. I've heard better. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, now, we're going to make the transition here from Sean Connery to William Shatner. <laughs> I actually work with William a week uh, on a on camera series, and it was phenomenal. <laughs> he was exactly the way you think he would be, <laughs> and he talked exactly like this. <laughs> he said, "I understand you. You do my voice," and I said, "Yeah, but not very well." And his wife goes, "He also does Leonard," and he goes, "You do Spock?" I go. I go, yes, I find your course of action highly illogical. And he goes, I've never heard anyone do spa. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. All right, I can't wait to hear this one. Morgan Freeman. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the temperature is now 75 below zero, and a number of the penguin chicks do not survive the night. And we discover that, yes, indeed, penguin tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then uh, let's transition here to Star Wars C three PO. No, I've actually done a bunch of this. For this, you need an empty Coke can. Okay. Hello, I am C three PO, human cyborg relations, and this is my counterpart R two D two. Shut up, R two. I'm doing a new segment. Oh dear, he's so very rude. Oh, it's <laughs> awesome. And then finally, oh, uh, Master Yoda, one that you know well. <clears throat> yes, which other master you have found? Or at least his voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom? Very weird. Very well. How do you how do you find the range in all of those? Did you, did you were you fans of all of them and just Yeah, you know, I just, just I'm a good a, I'm a good mimic. A I, good mimic? I would, you know, when I was a kid, I'd watch things on television and I'd try to talk like them. And what I didn't realize is I was watching, you know, reruns of shows from the 1960s and uh, and those guys, you know, there's no, there are no characters like there are, there were back then on TV today. You don't find these broad, you know, ridiculous voice characters anymore. But I mean, it's like the guy that was on the I Love Lucy show five times every season that was like, oh, hello, Mrs. Ricardo. You know, it's like, you know, what did he say? What did he say? I don't know. He didn't say. You know, uh, you, don't, you don't hear that on TV for anymore, sure. but back then, you know, I would listen to that and I would try to mimic it, and uh, I guess it worked out okay because people pay me to do it now. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, real, real big fan of your work. Thank oh, you so thank much you. for coming on. Happy Halloween to you and your family, okay? The Force will be with you. Always. Always. Since I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, check out Tom at TomKane.com. Kim? Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. The Force of Science has invaded our studio this morning. After the break, we're gonna learn how to levitate everything from Rice Krispies to marshmallows. Stick around, you do not wanna miss it. Right. <laughs> Welcome back, Jeff Rosenblatt from Science City. Now joins us with some fun ways you can channel the force at home. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what do we have lined up? Uh, so right here we have what is called a Van de Graaff. It creates static electricity, something you could do with a balloon if you rub it on your hair at home. It okay, creates and your static. hair yeah, stands Yeah, and your hair up. stands okay. up. So here we use a little bit more electricity, probably about 100 to 200,000 volts. All right. But it's actually really safe. It's very low amps, all right? So we're going to have you try it out, and okay. we're going to see what you can attract or repel using okay. the electromagnetic force, or what we, cool. we call the force. So we're going to be using the force this morning. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, so we're going to step, step up. up. And put okay. one hand on here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in down here for you. All right. And so uh, pretty immediately, you should feel a little bit staticky. Oh, yep. Okay. Oh, and the hair is showing it. it. The hair is showing it. It's fabulous. <laughs> now, <laughs> that hair would fly off if it wasn't attached. But we have things here. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's a good look. It's a good look. Yes. Okay. Um, so if you want to take your free hand, we can see what happens okay. maybe with materials that aren't attached. So come okay. down slowly, and we'll see. Who knows? A little more, a little more. You might have to get kind of close. And so they start oh, to oh, levitate oh. a little bit. A little you can go down a little closer. Put your fingers together, put them apart. The shape of your hand changes Ooh. how the charge leaves your body. And you can yeah. even pick, pick a couple up. Pick a couple up, it's okay. And then you're gonna kind of open up your hand. Oh. <laughs> and you know, the tips of your fingers, they fly off because that's where all the charge leaves your body. It's a very positive charge today, so you're, you're very optimistic. It's the good force, well, yes. all right? A lot and of optimism. A lot of optimism. <laughs> So something else that's a little more dramatic is okay. just bubbles, all right? All right so I'm going to put so them. Ready for those? So oh, I'm blow can, them towards you. Can you hear you. that? That's yeah, the tips cool. of my fingers. Yeah. Just kind of concentrating a charge straight out okay. from them. It's pretty cool. So here we go. We'll see how well this works. 
Oh, I just pushed them away. Uh -huh. You see, I'm using the force to push those away. Oh, you are. <laughs> it's very cool. Pretty awesome stuff. So they come Love towards you. This. They get your positive charge and then they get repelled away. Okay. Who says? And just come down, step on the ground. You're okay. fine. You're fine. Whoop. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> Woo! We're going right, to move so it to a safe location over here. over here. And uh, what we have now, besides using the force, the uh, static <laughs> electricity force, yes. uh, we're going to do some sound effects. Very cool. All right. And uh, over here, there's something you can do actually at home. Just an everyday item, it's a uh, metal slinky, just like this. Gotta be a metal one though. It's gotta be a metal okay. one. And uh, if you just had the slinky like this and you dropped it, it kinda just sounds Yay. not like much, right? Yeah. But we have to magnify the sound, so all you have to do is take a cup and you put it on top like that and all it right. kinda magnifies things for so you. So I'm gonna so go ahead and do that. Give it a try. Oh! Ooh. That's that cool! Choo, yep. choo, and all choo. you have to do is let it kind of contact the floor and that vibration gets magnified through the cup. It's a very cool, easy thing to do at home. Plastic cups, styrofoam cups, oh, they yeah. all work. It's very cool stuff. Love this. This is yeah. great. Create your own little uh, blaster. Your little sound uh, effects machine right blaster there. Blaster war at home. Okay, now I'm going to step out of the way for this one. I'm going to yeah. move on over here. Okay, so Don't need to burn the hair off. No, no, no. So there's one more effect that we can do okay. um, with this. Um, this is called a Tesla coil. Okay. Uh, this was invented by Nikola Tesla back in 1893. But what this does, it actually shoots out a, a constant stream of electricity okay. from okay. the tip of that little uh, pen there. And uh, this uh, is very high voltage, so we're going to stay nice and far away. Yep. We have this cord here <laughs> to stay nice and safe. But this is kind of uh, looks like the effect that uh, Palpatine did as like the Sith, how they shoot electricity oh, out of their bodies. You got okay? that, Nick? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're all ready. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on, and we'll start turning up the power here. And oh, of, uh, you can, oh, you can. We have, uh, we have one more way to do it. We can actually do uh, some kind of frequency pulse here. Okay. That is so cool. <laughs> Nick is totally geeking out over there. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff though, yeah? Yes. It's very nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Jeff, thank you again so much for being here. If you Absolutely. would like to learn more about Jeff or Science City, it is located inside Union Station. Go ahead to go ahead and go on to unionstation.org and search Science City. It is prime ghost hunting season, but what about spooky adventures inside a local hotel? The Kansas City Paranormal team is investigating the Elms and Excelsior Springs and our Matt Stewart following along from one of the scariest places, the spa. Ooh. Well, we have set the mood down here in the basement of the Elms Hotel and Spa. This is the spa area, and there are some signs of ghostly apparitions in this part of the hotel, along with other parts of the hotel as well. And to talk more about that, I want to bring in Jan Schuler. He is with Kansas City Paranormal. Jan, step on in here real quick and tell us a little bit about what's been seen down here. Well, down here, there's been many instances where we've actually captured spirit apparitions over our thermal camera. And uh, as well as that, we've actually heard stories about a small child that drowned down here. And his spirit is said to be seen by lots of employees and guests to the hotel. Yeah, talking with employees, they say they've seen a little boy playing on the stairs. And then they turn back around and the boy is gone. Yeah. Talk about some of the equipment you use, because it takes this equipment to actually kind of find that proof of the paranormal. Definitely. This is what we call the SB11. It's what we call a ghost box. And it uses AM and FM radio frequencies going at a fast rate of speed. And if you hear spirits talking through this device, and like you, you talk to them and these spirits will come through the ghost box and if you ask them re relevant questions and relevant answers come through, that's when you hit the holy grail. So you've heard ghosts talk to, I mean they've talked to you. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We've had full on conversations, intelligent conversations with spirits. Oh my gosh, what inspired you to get involved with this in the first place? I think it started when at a very young age when I was about 14, 15. I'm originally from South Africa and I visited some family there and I went into a house that was old and abandoned and I saw a very, uh, a very traumatizing thing and it was a visual of a spirit basically. It was a tall black shadow and it came towards me and I've been searching for answers ever since. Have you found the answers you've been looking for? I'm getting close. I'm getting pretty close. <laughs> 
I like to think so. It's fascinating. I, I want to bring in uh, Brian real quick um, because he is wearing all the gear. And this is what these ghost hunters wear when they go out. They take a ton of gear, spending thousands of dollars on it to prove it, getting it on video and audio tape. And you yourself can come on out and meet Brian and Jan tonight. They're having a ghost tour right here at the Elms Hotel and Spa. If you go to the Elms Hotel and Spa .com or to KansasCityParanormal.com, you'll be able to find more information. Sign up. There are still spots available for tonight's ghost tour on this Halloween's Eve, uh, where there have been these apparitions showing up here. Friendly spirits, they say, at the Elms and Excelsior Springs. So come on out, find them for yourself. Matt Stewart, Fox 4 News, working for you from Excelsior Springs. What they had to work with, they did some just amazing work. They were, there was a lot of groundbreaking uh, work being done on those films at the time. Well, just as Star Wars changed and developed with technological advancements, so did a local special effects studio. We're going to take you behind the scenes and show you how amazing 3D animation is made. Ahead on our Halloween edition of Fox 4 News at 9. Good morning from the 501st Legion of Kansas City. <laughs> oh no! The dark side has invaded. They are in the front lobby heading this direction. Darth Vader and his stormtroopers have entered the building, but who is he really? The Dark Lord will reveal his identity coming up in a few minutes. You want to stick around for this. Just trust me on this one. Hey, we're taking a live look out the door right now. We do have those clouds starting to roll on into place. Still a little, little bit of blue showing through, at least for early this morning. The clouds will definitely fill the skies later today, and so will rain. 40 degrees right now should be into the middle 50s around lunchtime, and upper 50s expected for afternoon highs. The cloud cover is uh, definitely starting to thicken up, especially just off to the south. Here comes the rain later tonight, especially for those on the Kansas side. Starting around 6 p.m., it'll continue during the overnight hours. At times, could see a few heavy downpours. Otherwise, it's all out of here just in time for the trick-or-treaters tomorrow evening. Temperature's going to be a little on the cool side though. We're going to fall from 56 down to 50. And don't forget to set your clocks back one hour before bed Saturday night. We are going to see warmer weather return for the start of early next week. Leah? Yeah, don't be jealous, but uh, Nick just told me I had nice buns. <laughs> it's been 38 years since the first Star Wars movie flew into theaters. Well now, of course, millions of dollars later, the world will watch as the Force awakens. But in the past three decades, special effects have, of course, come a very, very long way. Well, Nick had a chance to go behind the scenes of a local award-winning visual effects studio to see what it's like to create a masterpiece. We chose pad building that. That's the where we had to build the facade. It may not be lightsabers or the Millennium Falcon, but Jeff Beeth and his small staff at Bazillion Pictures have the creative minds to develop a fire-breathing dragon, larger-than-life basketballs, and even a train that intertwines and loops its way through Union Station. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> that right there is a really sweet shot. After 11 years at Hallmark, Jeff evolved and expanded to the 3D world of animation and visual effects. And you don't need a multi-million dollar Star Wars budget to do it. What we've really seen through the years is some of that software and certainly the hardware has gotten more affordable. Now, 20 years after Bazillion began, Jeff says technology has grown leaps and bounds, making tasks quicker for everyone from Hollywood to the family couch. It's allowing people in their own basements to, to do computer animation, to do uh, digital music. Basically, this is what everything follows is this spline. So the, the train tracks that are modeled are just wrapping around that, and so is the, the trains doing the same thing. One of Bazillion's most well-known works is Union Station's Centennial Celebration. Digital artist Ben Dahlman spent countless hours creating layers and multiple trains that would eventually tell the story of the Kansas City landmark. But as creator Jeff points out, it wasn't always a click of a button away, even for mega hits like Star Wars. With Star Wars, they, they weren't able to do the compositing work uh, to the quality that we can do today on the computers. So uh, they were literally shooting a lot of different things on film and then kind of combining those plates together, that, that film footage, and then refilming it. And, and that's why 
if you really look, some of the things, the tones don't match. Uh, you know, if they've added a character in, off, oftentimes you'd notice like there's, it didn't have the contrast that some of the other stuff had, and that was just due to that process that they, they were working with at the time. For any award-winning special effect, Jeff says it starts with a story before moving on to the technical side. And while no doubt he plans to see The Force Awakens, Jeff says he'll leave his technology cap at home. If I'm really uh, engaged in the movie, I'm not paying a lot of attention to the to the effects, um, even though that's what we do. Even working in an office with awards and accolades, the staff at Bazillion says, sometimes watching Star Wars without all the digital tools of today is just as appealing. Ooh, uh, the fifth one. Really, the first three are are the ones that that I go back to the most. Well, if you'd like to learn more about the company and all of the cool work they do, check them out at bazillionpictures.com. We'll be right back. And this has been the best show ever. <laughs> and we also want to thank a lot of our Star Wars friends behind us here. Yes. Let's bring in Bill Holmes of the 70th you, Explorers is here you. with more. Bill, it is great to see you. You guys look fantastic, and it's so awesome to see all of you guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what you guys do here. Um, we actually are part of the 501st and Rebel Legions. Um, we actually make movie actor costumes, screen actor costumes, and spend a lot of time donating our time to charity. Yeah, you guys uh, do a lot of parties. In fact, you guys have been over to my son's birthday party. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, I you, bet that's a shock to people at home. <laughs> you know, I know. But what's really neat is that you ask people to make donations to charities, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, uh, the, the 501st and Rebel Legions, like, last year raised over $45 million wow. worldwide. Oh, We're on man. every continent. We actually had a trooper in, in uh, Antarctica. Wow. You know, even though some of you might be from the dark side, you guys obviously have good hearts. So we <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> right. Thanks again for being thank here. You uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. We've been talking through our whole show. We have the big Darth Vader reveal. What? Who are you, Darth? Nick, I am uh, your father. We have had to sneak him in out of the studio and in for costume fittings, and Nick has been oblivious the whole time. So. Oh, I love it. Head blown. Oh my gosh. Well, Pops, it is our destiny, isn't it? Is that density? I can't remember. Hey, special thanks to Casey Costumes. You guys are the bomb uh, outfitting. Uh, outfitting uh, Kim I'm and Leia. Michelle, yeah, Leia. And, me, and of course, my dad. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a happy oh. Halloween. Be safe. We'll be back at noon in regular clothes. Yes. <laughs> happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Oh my gosh! <laughs>